The world is reaching staggering temperatures and on the brink of passing the pivotal 1.5 degree threshold. And across the globe, we're feeling the heat as it bears down on us in disasters from heat waves to wildfires to hurricanes. So as 2026 dawns, not with glimmers of daybreak, but with the sting of military strikes, climate scientists are already asking what might be in store for us this year. I'm Adam, I have a PhD in atmospheric physics, and I'm here to help you make sense of the changing planet we all share. And today I want to talk about whether 2026 will be the hottest year we've ever recorded. For those of you suffering from brain rot, the answer is possibly, but probably not. But for those of you whose attentions are still spanning, keep watching to find out how we know what we know and why the biggest questions for our planet and for us have just as much to do with the political climate as the planetary. Now, on one level, maybe it seems like, of course 2026 will be the hottest year. After all, the globe is getting warmer, something I wish there was a catchy name for. And yeah, look at the yearly temperature record and you can clearly see temperature go up. But that overall warming picture isn't smooth. There are wiggles too, which means that not every single year is a record breaker. So it's like you're hiking up a mountain. Not every single step is gonna be upwards. There might be some mini dips on the way up. And just a reminder, the mountain of global temperatures is one we really want to stop climbing as quickly as possible. Okay, so what's the latest on our trek? Well, last year involved a mini dip. At the time I'm recording, the official results are still being calculated by weather and climate centers around the world. But we know that 2025 will end up being either the second or third hottest year we've ever recorded. This means in the 150 years or so since we've actually got direct records, but also likely since before the last ice age. So that means since over a hundred thousand years. Oh, and the actual hottest year in all this time wasn't decades or centuries ago, it was 2024. The fact that last year wasn't the hottest recorded isn't some sign heating had stopped, it's actually what scientists were predicting as I shared this time last year. 2025's temperature will probably not be a record breaker. But the UK's Met Office is still predicting 2025 will be one of the three hottest years since records began. And if you don't want to miss the prediction for 2027, go ahead and subscribe. And while you're clicking on things, a like and a comment help the algorithm teach more people about our climate. So if 2025 wasn't a record breaker, does that mean it wasn't so dangerous? Sadly not because it was still scorching hot. And we felt this across the globe. We've seen extreme weather from heat to drought to storms, wiping out crops, homes, and lives. For the people who lost everything to tropical storms or loved ones to extreme heat, the fact that 2025 wasn't a record breaker is hardly much consolation. And we've got to be clear, the world is sweltering right now. Together, the last three years averaged at over 1.5 degrees Celsius hotter than the baseline. 1.5 degrees of heating is the more ambitious limit the world has agreed to try to keep us relatively safe. Does that mean we've passed the 1.5 degree limit now, that it's game over? Actually, no and no. We haven't passed the limit yet, since that's based on the longer term average, which is at more like 1.4 degrees at the moment. And passing this limit doesn't mean game over, as we've seen some people's lives are destroyed before 1.5, and some people will still be making record profits after. Every fraction of a degree we can avoid will save lives before and after 1.5. But however you chalk it up, the fact we're flirting with the 1.5 degree limit can hardly be good. It certainly is not. 
It's a huge failure of international climate policy and, frankly, a pretty bad omen of what's to come. Okay, but let's get back to predictions for the year ahead. I mean, yeah, how does that even work? The year's only just begun and I can barely trust the weather forecast a week or two in advance. Well, predicting the weather at a specific place at a specific time can be super tricky due to all the chaotic fluctuations. That's also why I'll almost certainly get comments saying, if global warming is real, how come I'm so cold right now in my bed? A question I always answer with another question. What's the first word in global warming? Climate and weather are very different, but overlapping things. Climate describes the broad patterns, which are far more predictable, which makes forecasting the temperature of the whole planet for the whole year a lot more doable. You see, we know a lot of the things that control global temperature, the makeup of the atmosphere and how we're changing it through all those greenhouse gases like CO2 and air pollution particles we're churning out. On top of that, there's the overall state of the atmosphere, ocean and sun. This crucially includes a natural fluctuation in the ocean called the El Nino oscillation. Some years this adds to the heating, other years it cools things down slightly. And that's one of the major reasons for the year-on-year -year wibbles we see in the temperature record. Now taking all of this into account, climate scientists at the UK's Met Office can estimate what the coming year's gonna look like. And as I've mentioned, they did a really good job for last year accurately predicting it'd be one of the hottest years on record, but unlikely to be the hottest. And this year, the prediction looks pretty similar. It'll likely be in the top four hottest we've seen, with a chance it'll be a record breaker. This means we can expect more of the same. And by more of the same, I mean more record-breaking temperatures, disasters, and destruction. Because even if the year for the planet as a whole doesn't break records, the high heat means that the local consequences still will in many places. But surely climate scientists can't predict everything. Of course we can't. Firstly, there's a range of estimates scientists provide based on the things we know that we don't know precisely. And there are important disclaimers too. The planetary and political things we know we can't predict. This could be in the shape of, say, volcanic eruptions, changes in pollution levels, or natural fluctuations we can't see coming. All of which played roles in the much hotter than expected temperature spikes we saw back in 2020 and 2024. I'll share a link to a video on that at the end. And just a quick note that that video and this one don't make any money from sponsors or ads. That's because I never sell you rubbish that you don't need. I can do that thanks to my amazing patrons. Click up here if you want to join the team. Now, if all this temperature increase is feeling exhausting, the good news is that all the evidence we have still indicates that we know how how to stop the heating. We need to stop emitting. Okay, that's great, in theory, but how do we stop emitting? That's where perhaps the biggest unknowns for 2026 come in, because we have the tools, but this year seems like it'll be pivotal politically for the world's evolving relationship with fossil fuels. For a while, emissions have been flatlining, but Trump has made as clear as possible not only that he wants to keep the age of oil alive, but that it takes precedence over the rules of international law, regardless of how many lives are lost in the process. We're going to have our very large United States oil companies go in and start making money for the country. The big question is how the rest of the world will respond. Do we follow suit and double down on our deadly fossil fuel habit, despite its dependence on increasingly unstable and violent regimes? Or do we ramp up renewables and other solutions, which we know will not only limit the consequences of heating, but will also save millions from air pollution and boost energy independence? And well, no climate scientist can predict that. That future depends, frankly, on 
all of us. How we use energy ourselves, how loudly we talk about the climate of our planet and of our politics, and with what force we push for a safer, less violent world. A world which prioritizes supporting nature rather than exploiting it. A world which cares for the most vulnerable rather than committing the most unspeakable acts upon them. And while I have no better idea how all this is going to end up than you do, I'm glad we're part of this community of climates together. Yeah, me too. Thanks, imaginary friend. Right, but I mentioned the unexpected spike in temperatures of 2023 and 2024. Well, here's what we know so far. Okay, until next time. Bye. Sing. Blah. Blah.